Hey y'all, it's Tajula. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a quick q and I don't have too many questions. It's about four different categories. So hair, um, faith, social media, and therapy. Okay, I'll start with the hair questions. First question, do you use a straightener? If yes, which one and what products to protect your hair? No, I don't use a straightener, especially not now. Um, but I haven't used a straightener in six years. So I don't use one. Someone says, I'm starting locks this week. My scalp needs constant oiling. Any suggestions? Um, I don't have any oil suggestions. The only oil that I use all the time is olive oil. And as far as if you're wondering if you'll be able to do that while having locks, I think it's actually the best way to get to your scalp is having locks because when your hair is free strand, it's, you know, you really can't get to it all the time. But with locks, because your hair is parted, it's actually a lot easier to be able to regularly oil your scalp. How long does it take on average for someone's hair to lock? So because I'm new to this journey, I'm figuring this out as well. So I only know as much as what Google told me um, because I don't have the experience yet. But Google has said somewhere around six months to two years. I've seen ranges like that. Um, but honestly, I don't know who who gets to decide when it's finally locked, if that makes sense. Because like if I look at my hair right now, it's obviously not locked. It's very much still finger coiled, but it looks like it's locked and it's just going to look more locked and for sure locked over time as it matures. But it's definitely tangled and knotted right now. But six months to a year or two years. Is what I've been hearing. Okay. Were you able to do a lint check from your hair challenge in 2019 till now? I was rocking with you. Hashtag inspo. I didn't do an official lint check since 2019. You guys know I did the grow with me, grow with lady. Oh, grow long hair this year to, in 2019. That was a playlist in 2019. It's still up there. But anyways, um, I haven't done an official lint check, but I have done a video where I pulled down my hair length so I'm not sure if it was I'm not sure if, if it was longer or how much longer I think it did look longer um but I, you guys could decide uh, let's see do you miss your curls all over lol <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss them one bit right now it, it's only been two months since I haven't seen them but I don't miss it I wake up I see my hair in the mirror these days and I'm like I don't I just, you know, I love it so much. I'm like, I just never knew that locks was me. But now that I have them, I'm like, this is just so me. Like, this is perfect. Should have did this a long time ago. Um, So, no, I don't miss my curls. Are you locking it? Yeah, Yes, I am locking my hair. How long do you plan on keeping your locks? Are they temporary or forever? So, I don't know how long I'm going to keep them, but I'm... I'm planning on keeping them permanently until I decide different if that time comes. Um, but I'm looking to a few years to have my hair locked at least. You are, so you are maintaining it yourself and how often do you retwist? Yes, right now I am maintaining it myself. I've only had like one or two retwists. I've only had um, my hair locked for two months and so right now I do monthly retwists. Why did you start locks? So it kind of snuck up on me. My little brother wanted to lock his hair and I was, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I could do it for you. I, like I ever locked my hair, I, you know, but I, you know, I've seen some things some videos and stuff. I know a little bit about hair. So I'm like, you know, you could be my guinea pig. <laughs> like, let, let me do it. So anyways, you know, he trusts me. So I have been locking, I had locked his hair. I started his hair on, on finger coils um, and have been maintaining his hair. And while I was learning about locks and all that for his hair, you know, looking up stuff on the internet or on Instagram, and it started to grow on me just like all the different styles they do and how they wear it. And I'm like, do I want to lock my hair? I never thought of it before my brother locked his own hair so so yes he inspired me he made me start to think about it and just me maintaining his hair I was like I could go with the level of maintenance maintenance that comes with locks like it just feels like it matches 
my lifestyle right now because the natural hair thing was not love my hair you know we was born with it but lord for me it was just the fact that in order to keep it not tangled and matted i eventually needed to detangle and i don't want to do that but with locks like the whole point it's for to let it do what it do. So that's what I say. So I'm like, that is what I've been, that's what I want to do with my hair. I don't want to detangle it no more. So that's why I like my hair. Goes with my lifestyle. And I don't have to do all that detangling no more. And my, and my brother inspired me. Do you use oils on your scalp? If so, what are some of your favorite? How often do you apply them? Um... I'm not big on the oil in my scalp thing, so not really. If it happens to touch my scalp because I put it on my hair, sure. Um, and the, I answered this with the other question, so olive oil is the oil that I usually use. Okay, that's it for hair questions. Now, faith questions. Okay, someone asks, what are practical things that keep you on track? So I guess um, if you mean on track as far as um, my faith or my relationship with God, that's, you know, Making sure I'm staying, staying consistent and disciplined in my like time with him, which I usually have that in the morning. Of course, accountability, so friends and family, the, the people that I have around me and close to me and that's around me often, um, they have a relationship with him also. So we encourage one another to him. When I'm feeling discouraged, you know, I might reflect on things God has done. But, you know, that all comes through the people around me and reminding me of those things or showing me love and, you know, letting me, you know, all of that keeps me on track. How long did it take you to know you were called to begin an online ministry? So I didn't know at all that I was called to begin an online ministry. Um, I was just on here posting about my hair. Is that the second half of the question? I don't know. I was just on here posting about my hair. And in 2017, I got tired of my hair. I remember that my I was like, I'm tired of making hair videos. And I just remember that's what my mind kept repeating. And in that, God had finally spoke to me because I was tired because it was time to take a different route. I was tired because I was still doing something that he was no longer really having me to do primarily and it's because he used the hair to set the platform up and then he had me pivot and make this shift okay I need you to put out my word that's when I knew that was 2017 that's when I knew it was when he frustrated me with hair and I was like honestly this is what I want to talk about and it was things that he was telling me to talk about that I guess I was not comfortable enough to talk about because this is my hair page and these people came for hair and you know they want to know about hair so why would I put this other stuff out to them that they didn't ask for um but I knew in 2017 so what has been something that you have struggled with before or even present um let's see presently right now and throughout all of my life um an ongoing struggle has been with uh giving the Lord continues to work on me with giving. I don't know what it is, but giving is not, and not giving in general, because you can give in any way. I think I'm very giving in my time. But when they need money, <laughs> they, I'm not the one people call on, <laughs> call on me, because I'll be like, uh, you know, and I will tell you no, and then, you know, that's all I look, Jesus, help me out, okay? <laughs> because but if you want me to do it, I'm gonna do it, but, that ain't the one I'm usually just handing out. So that is an area that I'm presently still struggling with, but I'm growing. I'm definitely growing. I know he's working on me. How do you stand firm knowing people may walk away from you for the changes? That's a good question. So, um, in, so in, in my real life, I guess I haven't had too many people walk away difficult, but I never had this I never felt like oh like I don't want to go in this direction or make this change because I want to keep them or hold on to them it was more so um I'm still going to go in this direction but dang this hurts and this is painful so how do I stand firm it's just me me knowing this this is just what I want to do I, I, I 
there's not a person or it I'm gonna do whatever God had me do because I can't take any path knowingly take any path <laughs> that I know he didn't have me to take or I know I'm gonna have to be without him like that's gonna be terrible so that's what I stand firm on is like I'm gonna go this route because this is where I want to go and I know this, this is it because I'm wanting to go where God wants me to go. So if these changes is causing folks to leave, I don't know what else to say. Because if I go in this other direction or stay somewhere I'm not supposed to be, it is terrible. Like I tell y'all all the time, or I don't know, I've at least said it in one video. When you stay somewhere for too long or you stay doing something or in a, a certain way or whatever for too long, it gets it's not easy to sit in it's actually easier to start going in that different direction and making that change painful but the pain don't stay but when you stay and you don't make no changes that's more painful to me that's more painful because it just it just is so i think the pros and the cons help me stay firm as well i'm like the just the other option don't sound good at all how do you handle the temptation to go back to old ways of living um presently i don't have any of the temptations and it's probably because my new way of living i am i i'm surrounded by people who also live this new way that i live if that makes sense so that that includes some people who have grown and evolved with me and it's in the same direction or new people who have come into my life along the journey um, but I can imagine that if I was still in certain environments or around certain people that um, those would bring those temptations up for like my old ways of living so those temptations don't come up for me really um, the only time as I was moving from my college friends like as I was evolving or like changing from as God was separating us I found a frustration being around them or hanging around them because sometimes uh, the activities were things that I no longer wanted to do and that actually was what started to cause the friction within our friendship because now people feel judged because I'm, you know, and it's like, so it's like, okay, look, 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 just you do your thing over there and let me do my thing over here. So I'm not, um, feeling tempted to do something and you guys are not feeling judged by me not choosing to do something with y'all and so um that's how I handle temptation is I don't flirt with it I don't sit around it I don't sit in the environment I don't I don't I don't go I don't go into those spaces that will tempt me boom that's just that's just what it is you got you to gotta know what those things are for you. Sometimes we overestimate our ability to withstand certain temptations and then so you get back into that space, like like texting your ex or something. That I don't know who I'm talking to because this don't got nothing to do with me. But th I know this has happened for me and I know this happens. You be thinking, oh, you know, I can go to this house and nothing's going to happen. We ain't together. Or, you know, I could text her and then delete the number. <laughs> delete the number because it's a temptation um and that's all i'm gonna say about that but yes yeah, sometimes we do overestimate our temptation but that's an example of where i i don't go into that space i don't even flirt with it i don't even allow myself to i don't go towards temptation if temptation gonna come it's gonna have to come to me or run into me but i'm not going to go to it so yes be very intentional be intentional. That's how I avoid temptation.